So yeah, Studio Piero announced they're making a brand new Maho Shoujo TV anime sh series, uh, a brand new entry in the Maho Shoujo series. So the Maho Shoujo series of uh, of uh, Studio Piero, they 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 re explained it here for those people who don't know. So the first thing was Maho no Tenshi Kirimi Mami. This is one of my favorite series ever. And um, Kirimi Mami is one of the early, early um, magical girl series of the 80s. Uh, I watched some of it when I was a kid with VRs because when it, when it was airing in France, like in the 80s, I wasn't born yet. I was born in a bit later, but I watched uh, the real, the real thanks, thanks to my siblings who are talking to me about it. And um, it's one of my favorite series ever, and I really like the design. So this was the first series. And um, actually, today for the 14th anniversary, um, like not today, but uh, this past few weeks for the 14th anniversary of Creamy Mami, uh, the official Studio Piero Twitter uh, on YouTube, they were re-airing the episodes. Uh, every week they were releasing the episodes. Um, today for the it was the 14th anniversary of the end of the series, so they re-aired the the final episode again. And after the end of the final episode, they made this announcement. Uh, so for now, there there isn't any details, but they just say that the there's a there's a slogan for the new series, which is uh, "Moichido utatte hoshi," which means I want to hear you sing once again. And this is interesting because I probably. It's probably either going to be a remake of Creamy Mami or maybe or maybe a sequel because Creamy Mami is one of these um, magical girls who is singing. And yeah, she's one of my uh, my favorite characters ever, so I'm really looking forward to this. So it's probably going to be some kind of remake, I assume. So my stance concerned when it comes to anime remake is kind of complicated because uh, I've been watching anime for a long time. Like I'm not that old, like I'm only in my thirties, but I've been watching anime since as far as, uh, since as far as I can remember. And 20 years ago, there were already a similar era than the one we are now. Like, like right now, we have tons of remakes and like it's very nostalgia fueled. We have tons of remakes, tons of reboots of past anime series, right? And the thing is, I could even remember 20 years ago, I was really hyped about anime remakes because that's kind of something that kind of happened 20 years ago as well. Because in the early 2000s, you had uh, Captain Tsubasa Road to, 20, Road to 2002 World Cup, which was a remake of the first Captain Tsubasa anime from the 80s, plus a sequel because it continued the story from the manga. So I was really into that uh, in the early 2000 after rewatching the original 80s anime with viewers like it was i wasn't when i was in, I was in uh, first year of middle school second year of middle school like everyone at school was talking about the 80s captain Tsubasa anime which was airing in france at the time because everyone was watching it because obviously in the in paris suburbs with a lot of minorities a lot of, of, of black muslim people like me a lot of arabs a lot of people uh, from from asia from from a lot of uh, old french colonies we also have a lot of, of uh, football soccer fans obviously so we were all really 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 into captain Sebastian at the time so i was watching that in early 2000 when um, when uh, Road to 2002, Captain Tsubasa was airing in Japan with my siblings, we were watching fan subs. You had that, you had the Sensei remake, which technically wasn't a remake because it was a sequel, it was a continuation of the manga adaptation, uh, the Sensei uh, Ade Sovie. So it was kind of like a remake because you, we are seeing for the first time with current technology, like with current, te with current technology, we are seeing um, Sensei anime. Uh, being done and Sensei is also one of my favorite things ever. Uh, I also watched We Airs like in early 2000. You also had, um, you know, what else did you add? Uh, come, um, what other remakes we had 20 years ago? Uh, you had the Shin Hokuto no Ken movies. The Shin Hokuto no Ken movies were remakes also of the of the original manga and anime. And these were like, like a uh, puzzling. Like, I have mixed feelings about them. Like, they have some good things, but I also have some things like, uh, I'm not really into it. But anyway, uh, what my point is, like, 20 years ago, I was already really, really into remakes. Uh, so, my, in a sense, like, I'm not, when I'm specifically talking about anime remakes, by the way, I'm not talking about game remakes or other remakes of other stuff. I don't know. I'm specifically talking about anime remakes. So when it comes to anime remakes, I'm kind of like, 
Like, it's very hard for me to not see them only as a product. Like, obviously, like, we live in a capitalism society. Like, everything is a product. Everything is made for to make money, right? Obviously. But when it comes to anime specific study, I think remakes have a really hard time hiding that because they're purely made to to make uh, to bring in a new audience and to, for people who think uh, all anime is automatically bad and automatically looks bad, which, which is not at all but, but well, i'm an anime boomer <laughs> like I, i'm gonna i don't want to sound more even more elitist and even more anime boomer than i am right now but yeah i don't really get people like obviously it's a it's an accurate test like you i think for me like this is this is gorgeous like this is this is really incredible design for me but yeah for people there's some 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 people they say it's old uh, it looks bad whatever so yeah i think for me anime is timeless good anime is timeless um when you make a remake like obviously the original still exists anyway but uh, for anime specifically i think that nowadays with the netflix culture with the hype culture social media culture influencers cultures culture where everyone only watch stuff airing now and suddenly there is there's less curiosity like because of VOD, you, you don't basically nowadays because of streaming, etc., you have much less chances of finding something unless you really go out of your way, unless you're really curious. You have very, very low chances of discovering new things you don't already know about because, like, you go on Twitch, like, people will only go watch games they already know about, like, they're going all going to watch Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, like, stuff they already played when they were kids, you know. So there's very like curiosity is not rewarded nowadays, and sadly, like it's not sadly that's a thing in my opinion. So yeah, uh, when it comes to anime remakes, I have a really hard time getting into them because I feel way too way too much like products to me. But whatever, we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll see. We we're not even sure if this is a, if this is a remake yet. I'm just speculating. So for now, there's just they just heavily hinted that this will be based something related to creamy mommy as i haven't said yet they just they just said it's a new it's a new maho shoujo piero studio piero series so yeah studio piero series uh, maho shoujo there are five titles there was creamy mommy i watched most of the episodes when i was a kid but i really don't re remember it so i would like to rewatch it soon one day um you had this, and then you had Maho no Yosei Persia. This one, I already watched episode one, but I never watched the whole series. I need to watch it someday. Uh, so yeah, really cute, right? Really, really great character design. And Maho no Star Magical Imi. This one is my favorite uh, with Creamy Mami. Uh, um, Magical Imi is one of my favorite characters, just like Creamy Mami. And I watched this like in 2002 or so when I was in summer vacation in Senegal. I watched this all of the episodes on French TV. We called like every morning we called, uh, we had to, I, <laughs> I'd go wake up one of my uncles. So he would set up the antenna in the, in the, in the garden. So we could watch TV and we, we were watching French TV, we were watching the rears of uh, Magical Amy with, with all my cousins in like in 2002 when I was in summer vacation in Senegal. Uh, this is one of my favorite series ever. And I don't remember it that much, obviously, because that was 10, three, two years ago. So I don't remember it that well. That's like, it's one of my favorite series and she's extremely cute. Uh, yeah, uh, this is one of my favorite series. So this is was the third one. And then after that, you had Maho no Idol Pastel Yumi. This one, I've never watched it either. I need to watch it one day. I don't really know about it. And you had the last one, Maho no Stage, Maho no Stage Fancy Lava. And this one too, I've never watched it. I really need to watch it. Uh, so yeah, uh, one thing interesting is that um, this fan, this uh, artwork is by uh, uh, Akemi Takada, Takada Akemi. So she's an extremely good character designer. She's one of my favorite character art designer artists ever. With uh, and she did the Bat Labo character design, the anime for the anime. She did the, uh, the character design for the Kimagure Orangeiro the anime for. For Bat um, Labor, Kimagure Orange Road, for uh, Creamy Mami, and for uh, uh, Fanchi Lala. She didn't do, she didn't do, uh, she didn't work on all of them. She only worked on Creamy Mami and on Fanchi Lala. Uh, she's one of my favorite character designers ever. So, um, 
She also used to do some illustrations for some games as well. She did some illustrations for Dokusei or Kakusei, I forgot. I need to play these games one day as well too. She did some promotional art. She didn't work directly on the games. And like if you look at her credits on Annelise, she did a lot of stuff, really, really gorgeous style. And oh yeah, she she was uh, on uh, on uh, Yurisei Yasura as well. Uh, on Yurisei Yasura and on Gatchaman as well. So she's one of my favorite uh, character designers ever. And uh, if this is related to Kimi Mami, I hope they recall her back to do the original character designs. If there, if this is a sequel or a remake to Creamy Mami, I really, 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 really hope they recall her back. So yeah, uh, um, another thing I wanted to talk about regarding Creamy Mami is that, in a sense, there are already a Creamy Mami remake ten years ago with Pretty Para. Pretty Para, which is the second series of Pretty series, which contains Pretty Rhythm, Pretty Para, Kiratto Pretty Chan, Watcha Pretty Magi, and the currently airing Himitsu no Aipuri, which started this April. And uh, Pretty series, which has nothing to do with Pretty Cure. This is nothing, no, no relation at all. Pretty series is by is a media mix franchise. It's an idol, um, sports, um, shoujo, uh, romance, uh, anime, and media mix series. Initially, it's a rhythm ar ar arcade game for little girls in Japan. It was made by Shin Sofia and Takara Tomi. Shin Sofia are the same people who make. Uh, style savvy series uh, uh, fashion dreamer i talked about it earlier with uh, with uh, kanaga yukiko sensei is a character designer so yeah and uh, 10 years ago you had prepara which was a second periodism periodism petty series series petty series series and piripara the protagonist of piripara at uh, Lara. She looks a lot like Creamy Mami. She she's extremely similar to Creamy Mami, and her gimmick is the same. She's a she's an idol. She's not a magical girl. She's an idol. But when she goes into into Pilipara world, she she grows up. This is this isn't her real form. That is when that is when she's transformed. And uh, it's very much like uh, Creamy Mami. She, Lala looks like this, like she's she's a kid. So yeah, Lala is a is a kid just like uh, just like Morisawa used. That's her real name. And when she transforms, she turns she transforms into, into Creamy Mami. And um, Lala has the same gimmick. Like when she is not transformed, she's like this. And when she transforms, she grows up. So this is a very common thing in the eighties Mako Shoujo Magical Girls, which is I think I don't know if it's I think it's less of a thing now because most. After after Sailor Moon, most magical girls I feel started to inspire themselves more from Sailor Moons, from Sailor Moon than from other stuff. But anyway, so yeah, uh, Kumi Mami, uh, as a sense, was re was very similar. Lala is very similar to Kumi Mami, and uh, in fact, uh, there was also a Kumi Mami collab in the in the in the Prepara arcade game here. This was in. 2016 so it's 2016 this isn't for my old blog like i'm cringing just looking at it my old blog anyway there were there was a creamy mummy collab in the Piripara arcade game right and moreover uh back when Piripara was airing the Piripara's director uh, moriwaki makoto which is a really really famous really really legendary anime director she used to post the covers of the storyboards on twitter and for episode 102 she posts this one which has lala cosplaying uh screaming mommy right uh by the way for the other characters they are all references to pretty series stuff and other stuff uh, this is Leona from Piripara. He is cosplaying Leo from King of Prism, which is Leo is based on Leona, but they are different characters. And this is uh, Doroshi from Piripara, and she's cosplaying Milky Holmes because Milky Holmes was a series that uh, Moriwaki Makoto directed before Piripara. If you look at, uh, I opened it up here, I think. Yeah, you can see her credits. She, wa she worked on Piripara, and before Piripara, she was working on Milky Holmes. So that's why, you see? Is cosplaying her, yeah. And here you have Sophie cosplaying uh, Umi from Rayaf. Uh, as far as I know, the characters don't have anything in common besides their haircuts, so maybe that's why. Besides the Hime cut, uh, I don't think they have anything in common, so maybe that's why they made her do Rayaf. And then you have Shion, Shion from Pripara, she's cosplaying Riru Riru Fei Riru. And Riru Riru Fei Riru is a magical, is a 
Magical Girl um, social series, which was directed by the director of uh, Pretty Vision, yeah, Ishida Masakazu. Uh, Ishida Masakazu didn't work on Piripara, di he didn't direct Piripara, but he was working on several episodes. So that's why he also, there were also references to him. And then you have uh, uh, Mirei, Mirei from Piripara, she's cosplaying Anne from Pretty Vision Rainbow Live. This one is a seiyu joke because they have the, they, they have the same seiyu, uh, you, uh, Serizawa Yu, which is, uh, she's an idol seiyu part of Iris, which is an idol group made by Avex, which was made in order to promote the pretty series. Uh, Serizawa Yu is the soul of the six members who really got a seiyu career because she's got a lot of other roles. She's in every pretty series. She's voiced, she also voiced Anna in uh, Kirato Pritchan. Uh, recently, she's voicing the Boing Boing Girl in Zenless Zone Zero. I don't know her name because I don't really care about the characters. Uh, they all look so blunt to me. And I'm kind of sad thinking that a lot of people only know her for these kind of roles and not uh, really, really, really good roles in pretty series series that Ayu is doing. Uh, she's also Karen Chan in Heaven Burns Red. Uh, so yeah. Yes, this is a, a, a serious reference, and here you have uh, Lala cosplaying as Creamy Mommy. So yeah, uh, so yeah, back to the announcement. So in a sense, for me, it's kind of like if I've obviously Creamy Mommy and Prepara are completely different series, but in a sense, it's kind of like Creamy Mommy already had a remake, you know, so because with Prepara because Lala is partly based on Creamy Mommy, so it's very funny to think about it. But anyway. Um, Another point I wanted to bring up is uh, uh, what else did I wanted to talk about? Uh, and that's it, I guess. So yeah, I'm kind of really excited about Creamy Mami, about uh, the new uh, Studio Piero Maho Shoujo series. Like, we don't know if it's going to be Creamy Mami or something brand new or a remake or a sequel to Creamy Mami, but I'm really excited. But if it's a remake, like I'm kind of, eh, because anime remakes, yeah, I'm not really feeling them most of the time because I feel, I feel like anime remakes have a much harder time hiding, hiding that they're products than regular anime, even if that's not true at all, because regular anime, especially, like, especially since like, uh, since like one core, one core started being the standard in early 2010s. One cool anime started being the standard, and pretty much every anime is literally an ad for the manga, for the light novel. Obviously, that's always the case, but it's even more noticeable now. Since this last decade, it's even more noticeable. So yeah, obviously, every anime is a product, like I explained. But yeah, for remakes especially, I'm really not feeling them most of the time. Let's see. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to check out the trailer for the announcement, yeah? I'm on a, one of my favorite characters either. This one I really need to watch it. Another one of my favorite characters ever. And this one I need to watch it as well. And I really need to watch this as well. So yeah, these are the Pierrot Magical Gear series. Five in total. And they're making a brand new one. So really looking forward to it. Moichido utatte hoshi. I want you to sing again. So yeah, it's part because of singing. It's definitely going. It's very likely to be Kirin Mami, but we'll we'll see. So yeah. Uh, also, another another important thing to note is that in the past, I already did some OVAs. I think some crossover OVAs between all of the. Studio Piero Magical Girl series, some gag series and stuff. And Creamy Mami also has a adventure vision novel like ADV game on PC98, I think you remember correctly. I really, really want to play this game one day. So uh, this is one of the games like I want to play with my hypothetical future wife one day. But yeah, that's it for this announcement, I guess. Um, they didn't know when, they didn't say when we will get more information, but probably in a few months from now on, because nowadays anime announcements are always like this. You only have a very, very, very small teaser with no information, and they will slowly drip feed us information. So, yeah. Whatever this is gonna be, I'm really excited for it. Even if it's a remake, at least at least if it's a remake, I could show it to my niece, because they're not, sadly, they, they don't 
they, they still haven't acquired, acquired the test for, for 80s anime of this every old age. So, but yeah, uh, at least if it's a remake, I'll be a, if it's a creamy mummy remake, I'll be able to watch it with my niece and so on. So I'm really excited. Is it right? So yeah, this is definitely the biggest news for me today. Studio Piero making a new TV series, Maho Sojo. Really, really looking forward to what it'd be like.